Station 7. Concrete Beam Production To date, we have used cube samples to determine the compressed strength of a concrete batch. In your lectures, you will have learnt that concrete is much stronger in compression than it is in tension. This will be illustrated at Station 8, where we will subject concrete beams to a bending test in order to determine the flexural strength of the batch. At this station, each group will produce said beams for these flexural tests. The beam produced in week 10 will be of standard concrete and not reinforced. This will be referred to as the plain beam. The beam produced in week 11, however, will be reinforced with two bamboo columns to improve the tensile capacity of the element. Some of these beams will also see the limestone aggregate replaced with shredded rubber from car tires. Furthermore, some of the beams will contain steel fibres to improve the ductility of the beam post cracking. The exact constituents of your group's concrete will be outlined during your visit to the lab. Throughout these videos, we will refer to these as composite beams. The composite beams will also be used to illustrate the effect of curing conditions on the strength of concrete. Half of the beams will be cured at 20 degrees Celsius and the other half at 30 degrees Celsius. Your custom built temperature sensor will be used in conjunction with an industry standard K-type thermocouple to measure the internal temperature of the composite beam whilst curing. These sensors will be attached to the bamboo columns and then encased in concrete. Both of the beams that you will produce will measure 600 mm in length and 100 by 100 mm in cross section. A wooden mould will be used to form the beams. The concrete will have hardened sufficiently after 24 hours to allow removal of the beam from the mould by the technical staff. For both the plain and composite beam, the moulds will have been coated with lubricating oil to aid in the later removal of the hardened concrete element. In week 10, you will then be ready to start filling the mould. In week 11, the following three preparation steps will first be necessary. Step 1. Measure and record the external diameter of the provided bamboo columns at a number of points using the vernier calipers. The bamboo will have been screwed into the mould prior to your arrival. Therefore, the internal diameter has been measured and will be given to you. This will allow the determination of the wall thickness of the bamboo. Step 2. Attach the industry standard K-type thermocouple to one column using the provided cable ties. It should be placed towards one end of the bamboo. Thermocouples have two distinct ends. At one end, the two wires are separate. The other end sees two wires twisted around one another to create the measurement junction. Please attach this latter twisted end to the column. The other end, with separate wires, will be attached to the data acquisition system at a later point to record the temperature. Step 3. Attach your custom made temperature sensor to the other column, again using the provided cable ties. Please place it at the same end of the beam as the thermocouple. It is good practice to then trim off any excess plastic from the cable tie. It is now time to cast the beam. The process to cast both the plain and composite beams is much the same. They will be filled in two equal layers, with the vibrating table used to apply compaction to each layer. The major difference between both specimens is that extra care must be taken not to damage the temperature sensor or thermocouple whilst producing the composite beam. Each layer should be vibrated for approximately 10 seconds. It is highly recommended that the data logger box for your temperature sensor be held clear of the beam whilst vibrating both layers. The vibration could loosen connections within your circuit. As per your previous experience, the final layer should be slightly overfilled. The concrete will reduce in height as it compacts.
Your beam should be finished in the same way as you previously finished cubes. To start, press the metal float down on the concrete and apply motion in a circular pattern. Next, hold the float at an angle of approximately 45 degrees and by way of a sewing motion, remove excess concrete until the top of your beam is flush with the mould. Do this in both directions. You may then run the float across the top of the surface to improve the smoothness. We would ask that you please clean the excess concrete from the side of the mould. The waste concrete should be returned to your bucket. Your beams will now be moved to their storage locations by the technical team. As stated previously, half of the beams will be stored at 20 degrees Celsius and the other half at 30 degrees Celsius. The concrete will be removed from the mould in 24 hours and the beams left to cure in their respective environments for a further 6 days. The curing process, as well as the testing of the beam, will be covered more thoroughly at station 8. Thank you for watching. See you in the lab soon.